It was my first weekend in Paris. I had my pass navigo in hand, my Google Maps at the ready, and was about to take on my first trip using the RER bus service. I walked down the stairs from my homestay's apartment to the 64th stop, saw the approaching bus, and boarded. Seemingly, everything was planned. Merely three stops away from the Jardin du Luxembourg, my destination, and suddenly an image no one wants to see, especially in a foreign country you've just arrived in. Two fatal words, no bars. Immediately, my mind and my heart started racing. I let go of the pole I had been clutching, held down the power button and volume button, and watched the small loading icon, all the while trying not to lose my balance. The screen lit back up, but still, no bars. I told myself to calm down and to not prepare for the worst, but this was especially hard to do given that the pressure was literally closing in from the quickly rising number of bodies around me. My phone was my lifeline. While I was very much still breathing, I felt completely helpless. Where was I even going? What stop was I at? How was I going to find my friends? I mean, the Luxembourg Gardens are literally 53 acres large. Panicked, hot, sweating yet in a coat, uncomfortable. I was crippled by fear partly due to the physical lostness, but mostly due to the fact that this meant I had to be alone with my own thoughts. Much worse than the latter, trust me. Despite being in one of the most beautiful places on earth, I could not for a second pause to appreciate my surroundings. I was too busy wandering the garden, searching and praying that I would see a familiar face. After 30 desperate minutes of trying to join random Wi-Fi networks and close to giving up, there they were, and I could finally breathe easy again. Flash forward five weeks in. While to the onlooker I may have looked exactly the same, I was transformed. Picture this. I'm walking briskly, headphones in, a new French bop blasting in my ears. That my phone is far from reach, nestled into a deep hole in the pocket of my coat. I know exactly which metro line I'm taking and I'm tuned into my mission, getting to check off another item on my solo food tour list, Las du Falafel, a hole-in-the-wall Middle Eastern eatery renowned for their food. After receiving the falafel, I wander about Le Marais, window shopping, taking in my surroundings, and finally settle upon a lone bench and just people watched, a new favorite pastime. In class the next day, my professor calls me out and saying, Est-ce que vous ne m'aimez pas? Caught off guard and completely confused, I obviously replied, No, pas du tout, pourquoi? Apparently, the day before, I was so focused in on where I was going in my own wandering ruminations that I hadn't even noticed my professor across the street frantically waving and trying to get my attention. That which had paralyzed me before had become so captivating that I became completely lost, but this time within the thoughts in my own head. In fact, now I craved being alone. Amongst other things, maybe the most important lesson I learned in my time abroad, how to appreciate the company of just me. While there is a lot of pain in being lonely, there is a lot of beauty in being alone.